so continuing with the quick revision of the cushings what exactly is the cushings it is a clinical condition which is characterized by excessive production of the steroids so now you need to be very much aware of first and foremost what is the most common cause of the cushings most common cause of the cushing syndrome is the supplementation of the iatrogenic steroids and what is the most common cause of right supplementation of iatrogenic steroids then what is the most common cause of the non iatrogenic cushings right the most common cause of non iatrogenic cushings most common cause of non iatrogenic cushings will be the pituitary adenoma right so that includes the pituitary adenoma right then what is the most common cause of the acth dependent type of cushings the most common cause of the acth dependent type of cushings is again the pituitary adenoma and the steroid production can be even from the ectopic sources what is the most common ectopic source for the cushings the most common ectopic source for the cushings that includes the small cell carcinoma of the lung right this small cell carcinoma which is also called as the oat cell carcinoma right which is also called the oat cell carcinoma actually there are many ectopic sources for the development of the cushings that includes small cell carcinoma of the lung then followed by that the pancreatic and as well as the bronchial carcinoid then followed by that the pheochromocytoma so these are all the ectopic sources for the cushings but out of this the most common cause will be the small cell carcinoma of the lung or the oat cell carcinoma of the lung right then what is the most common cause for the acth independent type of cushings the most common cause for the acth independent type of the cushings right the, what is the most common cause of the acth independent type of the cushings that includes the adrenal adenoma so these are all the important etiologies causing the cushings now you need to be aware of the clinical features in cushings what is the earliest clinical manifestation in the cushings the earliest clinical manifestations in the cushings will be the weight gain right weight gain is the earliest clinical manifestation and followed by that due to redistribution of the fat in these patients they will have a moon shaped face right and not only that because of redistribution of the fat there will be also buffalo hump right and the next important feature because of redistribution of the fat is development of the central obesity and this central obesity it is a very important risk factor for insulin resistance causing the type 2 diabetes mellitus right and you have some important skin manifestations that includes the skin atrophy then these patients they will have the easy bruisability right then these patients they will have the very very important feature that is the purple striae and in case of the acth dependent type of cushings these patients will have the hyperpigmented skin right and these patients will also have the development of immunocompromised state causing increased fungal infection right causing increased fungal infection okay so these are all the skin manifestations that you will have in patients with the cushings and related to metabolism carbohydrate metabolism these patients they will have hyperglycemia right and lipid metabolism these patients they'll have dyslipidemia and lipolysis causing increase in the free fatty acids right and the protein metabolism is that there is excessive proteolysis causing the proximal muscle myopathy right causing the proximal muscle myopathy so these will be the abnormal metabolisms that you will have in patients with the cushings and cardiovascular system manifestations is that these patients will have hypertension and cns manifestations is that these patients they will have psychosis and the emotional instability so this will be the central nervous system manifestations that you will have in patients with the cushings right and followed by that in patients with the ectopic acth please remember there is excessive activation of enac causing edema 
and not only edema there will be also hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis right hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis so these will be the features in case of ectopic acth being producing steroids where there is excessive activation of enac right and these patients with cushing's they are also at increased risk of thromboembolic events right they are also at increased risk of thromboembolic events okay then followed by this you need to be aware of the workup so what is the first line investigation in these patients is first line investigation is 24 hour urinary cortisol levels so 24 hour urinary cortisol levels they are elevated that is the first line investigation once the 24 hour urinary cortisol levels are elevated then you need to check the acth levels right then you need to check the acth levels now if you find that the acth levels are reduced then you need to suspect the individual is having the adrenal gland disorder right so if the acth levels is reduced either it might be it is acth independent type of cushings right if suppose if the acth levels are increased then you need to suspect it as the acth dependent type of the cushings right now in if it is if you are suspecting acth independent then what is that you need to do is you need to do ct or mri of the abdomen right ct or mri of the abdomen whereas in case of the acth dependent type of cushings like the investigation of choice will be MRI of the pituitary that is mainly to look for the pituitary adenoma because the most common cause of cushings is the pituit most common cause for acth dependent type of cushings is pituitary adenoma now if suppose the pituitary adenoma if you find that it is normal because in 90% of patients even though there is pituitary adenoma the sensitivity is only 90% in 10% of individuals where the tumor is very small the mri cannot detect even though there is presence of the pituitary adenoma so that is the reason why what you need to do is you need to do a high dose dexamethasone suppression test right high dose dexamethasone suppression test now with this high dose dexamethasone suppression test if suppose if the acth levels are reduced then you need to think of the pituitary adenoma if the acth levels are still on the higher side in spite of giving high dose dexamethasone then you need to think of the ectopic acth producing the cushings either it might be small cell carcinoma pancreatic and bronchial carcinoid medullary carcinoma of thyroid or even the pheochromocytoma right now if you are finding that the acth levels are reduced and it is pituitary adenoma but mri was normal then in such case what you need to do is you need to check the petrocell venous sinus sampling right then you need to check the petrocell venous sinus sampling for acth right so petrocell sinus sampling for the acth has to be tested here right now the very important so that is about how you need to diagnose then after having discussed you need to be aware of the very important part of the workup if it is ectopic acth where all it is coming from either small cell carcinoma or pheochromocytoma pancreatic and bronchial carcinoid and then medullary carcinoma of thyroid so if you are finding that it is ectopic acth then you need to do ct or mri of the abdomen and as well as thorax right as well as the thorax right so this is about the how you need to work up a patient with the cushings now after having discussed about the work up then you need to know the treatment so what exactly is the treatment of choice for cushings so the treatment of choice for the cushings will be surgical excision of the tumor right surgical excision of the tumor now if suppose if there is any contraindication for surgical excision then you need to give the medical management and among the medical management what is the drug of choice among the medical management the drug of choice will be the ketoconazole so ketoconazole why is that we are giving we are giving ketoconazole because it is adrenal enzyme inhibitor and it prevent the steroid hormone synthesis right 
and the next important drug is if suppose if there is ectopic ACTH what is the most common cause for the ectopic ACTH causing Cushing's that is small cell carcinoma so if it is small cell carcinoma then the drugs that you need to give is the irinotican right plus cisplatin so this is the drug that you need to give and if suppose if there is bilateral adrenal adenoma or bilateral adrenal carcinoma where you have done bilateral adrenal resection so if once you've done bilateral adrenal resection, the individual will land up in the steroid deficiency. So once you've done a bilateral adrenal resection, then in this scenario, you need to give replacement steroids and this particular replacement steroids, right? So this particular replacement steroids that includes the hydrocortisone. So this is about the Cushing's in quick recap.